Derek D. Sharp right here, yeah, straight off the stage, man. Yay. What energy. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, my what hips classics. are sore. My knees are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all doesn't matter but the rock and roll. Yeah. Everybody left with a good feeling. Oh, good. You know? Point, yeah. And they got turned on to some new music. Absolutely. How cool is that? Yeah, that's why we, 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 we took a few songs <laughs> in the set to put some new ones in. Yeah, man. They fit right in. It wasn't like, well, wait I a minute. I think so, yeah. That was a left turn. Yeah. Now, at what age were you when you first heard Guess Who songs? I, fuck. I don't even know. I was probably pretty young. Okay. You know, because I'm Teenager Canadian. Coming right? Up. I'm Canadian. Canadian so. content <laughs> all over the radio. Yeah. I remember these songs, probably, probably uh, these eyes. You know, mm -hmm. I don't remember. It was like a, it was so long ago. Yeah. You know, how long ago is that? Fifty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It really was remember. a different millennium, but they hold up so well. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. you're coming out undone and mm -hmm. no time and no mm -hmm. sugar and American Woman. Well, I remember hearing those songs a lot because uh, in those days we'd, we'd, we'd travel in the car. I lived in Thunder Bay, which was an mm -hmm. offshoot of Winnipeg. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and we only had an AM radio. And the AM and played all, a lot of the Guess Who songs. Mm -hmm. And in Canada, you heard the Guess Who, the Stampeders. Uh, uh, bands like that from, 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 from that era, Five Man Electrical Band. They were the AM bands. Okay. Then there were FM bands. But we, yeah. our car didn't have FM, <laughs> so I didn't discover all the FM bands until that happened, which is probably why I would have known the, the Guess Who, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously your voice fits in well. You're hitting notes Burton can't do anymore. You're oh, doing yeah. justice to the catalog. <laughs> Thank you. You know, thank you. These songs, um, I, I always say, there's cool bands, and there's great song bands. Yeah, that's definitely. You know, the, the songs are fabulous. There's know. a lot of bands that are cool, and they rock out, mm -hmm. and, and the smoke clears, and you're like, uh, I don't remember any of the songs. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> have know? a good unit now. Like I feel, this is the best it's ever been. Like once Rudy joined, Gary probably said that he was the last piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, the 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 show just got better and better and better as 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 it. Uh, is there not, a story about how Rudy came into yeah, the band? Of course, who there is. I mean, I I've been in the band now, uh, coming on eleven years, okay. and um, well, Rudy, 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 and my wife Sass Jordan. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Uh, okay, so they work together, okay. and. Uh, Jim uh, was 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 retiring, and uh, we uh, we tried a couple of people out. One of them was Michael Devon from uh, White from Snake. White Snake, yep. who was also a friend, cool. and he was in a pro. This is such a small world. He was doing a project with Brian Tishy and Sass called Sun, and uh, he came and filled in. And then Leonard and I went for a jog one day. And I said, I wonder if Rudy would, would ever be interested in playing in, in, in the band. So I called Sass. Rudy, I, I don't know if I ever told you this story. We were on a jog. We were running. And we finished the run. And I called Sass up. And I said, do you think Rudy might be in the... You know, she's like, well, why don't I ask him? <laughs> and he was like, are you leaving? Oh, I love you. Thanks, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. And he was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> so then. Uh, you caught him at that sweet time. Huh? You caught him right in the sweet spot, oh, you know. He, it's like he said. He was tired of something goes, and ready no, no, for something. No, no, he new. told me that, you know, this is, he, he was a fan back in the day. That's how old the music is, right? Wow. He's like, when he played in cover bands, he used yeah. to play, he already knew all the songs. Yeah. Because he used to play in cover bands in the late 60s, early 70s playing this music so he was thrilled and I was thrilled to have him because he's such a lovely you know yeah. how lovely Rudy is well, you want a good player but you want somebody you can hang with you and know? he's he is the consummate entertainer I mean, yeah. he knows there's there is nobody like him right you know what I mean all be, the bass players, bass players in the back should take, take note away well he's, and then there's Rudy Sarzo yeah they should take note while he's still around 
this is a school of how to be a bass player in a big rock rock and roll band and, and how to act and how to move, and how to present yourself in front of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I come from the same school because that's what I grew up you know, you know, mm -hmm. doing like, you know, big seventies bands and eighties bands. Yeah, yeah. It was a show. The show's the most important thing. The playing is okay. It's important, don't get me wrong, but if you don't make a connection with right. people, you've you, then you've lost you could be it. Going through the it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. The only thing that matters is this. Because it was the you're first time the same songs every night. You know, you first time I ever saw you perform tonight and you, you immediately connected with the audience. I saw you. <laughs> you were like I am there, right there soaking it up. Camera. There we I'm go, like, man. Who is this? I got guy? the behind the scenes, the in front of the scene. <laughs> I'm, I'm going home with the treasure, you oh, know. Oh, that's wonderful. Absolutely. Oh, I'm happy. But, you, um, you, you know, I immediately, because you know half the crowd, which are probably in their 60s or, you know, yes. 50s, Absolutely. maybe a few 70s, mm -hmm. they're like, who is this guy? You yeah, know? If, they've, if it's the first time yeah. they've seen us, but, you know, I've been in the band a long time. I know. So the, most... Burton's been out of the band, what, 40 years now? I yeah, and, and I'm also, I think I'm... According to Gary, I'm the longest serving singer they've ever had because they haven't lasted very long. For right. whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But I, I've been in the band so long now, yeah, and we play to at least half a million people every year. So yeah. generally when we play, uh, the audience knows I'm going to be there mm -hmm. at this point. You know, mm -hmm. maybe not when I started, you know, because mm -hmm. there was another guy. But you probably guy. haven't been through a lot of these U.S. cities in a while, so... You know, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, oh, geez, we played everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you, you but, know how it yeah, is. Sometimes you're, you're a fan of a band, you're wondering like, well, who's still in the band? Yeah, what, absolutely. Is that, it a good unit? Who's that singing? That still happens, for yeah. sure. It just doesn't happen as often anymore. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. But no, I, I, I love the record, you know, and hearing the new songs, I'm like, he's his own guy. He's not trying to... Sound like Burton on no. the new original no, stuff. No, not and, at all. Why would that. I do that? No. And, and then when you came out live, I didn't know what to expect. Oh. I, I know the vocals were shining on the record, uh -huh. but I was pleasantly surprised. So you'd heard the record previously? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, right when it came out. Wow. And then, of course, you go into Undone and Pat for the Wolfman. And I was telling Gary, Wolfman Jack had an office right below me on... Hollywood and Vine, Did he? back in the 80s. Wow, that would and I'd, cool. I'd come downstairs. I was right by the Capitol building. I'd come downstairs someday, and he'd be coming out of his office. He'd attract a crowd, man. Absolutely. All the Hollywood tourists, they're like, oh, my God, you know, it's Wolfman Jack. But he was mysterious. Like, to me, I used to listen to his radio show. I turn, When I was a kid, I'd, I'd, I'd turn it on. It would be yeah. like midnight in my room, my yeah. little fucking <laughs> radio. You know, it's it like was more gold, about... Man. I didn't even get know... That. AM sound. I, honest to God, I didn't even know what he looked like until uh, like that American Graffiti movie came out. I had no idea what he looked like. I just knew that voice. You know? Yeah. And then in the 70s, it got kind of campy. And right. Then, then he had his, he was on the Midnight Special. Then yeah. he had his own variety show. Right. All of that. So doing some infomercials. Yeah, some, right. <laughs> He's or s something. selling a blender or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, he, back in the day, I would pick up his show a thousand, fifteen hundred miles from. He was oh, broadcasting sure. out of Tijuana. Yeah, that's right. And they were blast, and they yeah. didn't have the FCC wow, you rules. Old. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> I was growing up in the seventies. Yeah. And I'd be in Montana by uh, Yellowstone Park, and I'd go out at night on the deck, get the AM radio that's out, right. and you'd be just turning the dial, and then all of a sudden, like, ah, you know, Wolf Bad, you know. You know what I'm like, talking about. Oh, shit. I used to do a good imitation, but I can't, yeah, it just fucks my voice. I, I see Leonard trying to do a little, little Wolf Man over there. Yeah, but I, 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 I could do samples. a really good one. I'm not going to do it because I'll fuck my voice up. But, Might uh, as well throw some samples on the keyboard, man. Have the real Wolf Man, you know, yeah. coming through. Well, then it depends on the night. You know? Like it's, it's hard to. But admit, this crowd to talk like that, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you could ruin your. <laughs> you know, well, blow me down. You can do Popeye at the same oh, time. You can do Wolfman Jack. Yeah, but he, the he, same guy. he he was a rebel. People don't know before he did yeah. the NBC, you know, Midnight Special. He was raunchy. He was oh, rebellious. Sure. 
you know, the innuendos were flying, man. <laughs> Yeah. He knew he was reaching a, a, a crowd that was probably getting yeah. a little tipsy and a little, a little amorous, you yeah. know, at that point <laughs> of the night. For sure. It was amazing. Well, I, I'm not going to keep you, but um, what are your favorite songs of the, the, the catalog to sing? When, when you the see, old songs? Yeah, the old songs. songs. When, when you see it on, on, on the set list, what gives you a special little, oh, yeah, I'm going to tear this one? Well, out. these eyes, because it's hard to sing. It's very hard to sing, cause uh, I, I'm always. It always gets me uh, going that I have to sing that fucking high note every night. I'm like, First home for and to me, it's always home. like a ch every <laughs> single night. It's a challenge. I mean, I, I don't know what he was thinking, singing that, singing that high. It's a high, high note. And of course, I don't really sing falsetto. I do, but not in that range. So I sing it full voice, and and. Uh, you know, there's been the odd time where uh, maybe a little squeak came out <laughs> instead of a note. And, I, you know, and everyone's looking at me, going, waiting for that moment. So it's important to me to, to deliver that. Yeah. So that, that's why that would be uh, my favorite. I really like Hand Me Down World. That, oh, that's yeah. one of my favorite songs. Such I think that's one song, of the best songs you know? they have. Kurt Winner. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. when you listen to a song like that, you realize... Oh, the lyrics are there great, There was too. no cookie cutter back then when they were turning these hits out. Yeah. They really yeah. sounded different. Mm -hmm. Hemi Down Dunn's World was completely song. different yeah. than... They're all different no songs. No Sugar, and, and yeah, it's uh, These Eyes, completely different than American Woman. And, For sure. You know? For sure. They yeah. really stood out. It's great. And, and how does it feel to sing that anthem, American Woman? I mean, Lenny Kravitz has brought it back. It's a tough that song, song to sing, too. That song never um, goes away. It, it really doesn't, huh? And it, now oh, it's it, in a TV show, and you know, and and obviously, and, and a edge, lot of people, you know, because us Americans were wondering, are like, are they dissing us? Are, well, are they putting? No. Well, you know, if you ask me, I I, I don't know the story at all. Uh, uh, you know, I've heard so many different versions about <laughs> how they wrote it and what happened. Because it depends who you talk to, right? Yeah. But to me, I don't know anybody that if, takes it. If it that really way. was was if it was really a song written out of a jam, then I think it's plausible that, you know, it just, America, it just sounded cool. You know, sometimes you write songs because, and, and you say lyrics because they sound cool. A great example of that is, is I read a story about Paul McCartney doing Jet. Mm -hmm. And somebody said that he almost just made up the words. It doesn't even mean anything. Mm -hmm. But it just sounded just good to sing. The music. So there's part of that. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you know, it's not something you would do all the time. But I love. I kind of like when when they do that. A song doesn't have to mean something. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It just sounds the good. You don't care. Those songs, you know? Yeah. Obla yeah. Di, obla da. And then there's songs where people only know the chorus and they have no idea what the verses are, mm -hmm. what it means. Like Born in the USA. Mm -hmm. And then the you know it was is that the one Reagan wanted to use in his in his thing and and, yeah. and they're like dude uh, did you hear the rest of the song it's not a happy <laughs> tune you know what I mean right. or or what's that song Life is a Highway yeah what the fuck is the verse to that song nobody knows <laughs> nobody knows except for the guy that sang it right <laughs> but everybody knows Love is a Highway yeah man right? the country guys have covered it yeah man now. but I'd be happy to have written one of those songs why not it's just music keep the publishing it's man. just music. It's just music, and yeah. music's great. I love all music. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank again. You. Guess who is kicking ass? Please check out the Facebook and the website and the new vinyl. Get get the get the turntable out or get the CD blasting, man. Guess who is back? Derek, it's a pleasure, man. Looking forward to seeing you next time around. It was my pleasure, and I'm going to shake your hand <laughs> or something like that. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. All right.